and welcome back to this pre-spring break episode of BKTV News. I'm Maria Harris. And I'm Javen Coderick. Maria, do you have any big plans for spring break? I actually don't. Just working. What about you, Javen? I don't either. All right, well, we're both super excited for spring break, but first, let's get on with this episode of BKTV News. In our first segment, Austin Bostick and Blake Zahner give us a look behind the scenes at Sweetheart 2019. Well, this is my sixth year as a student council co-sponsor. Um, and so my first one was six years ago. And it went awesome because I was not running the show. Miss Montgomery was, and she's incredibly amazing. And so I learned a lot from her. Um, so now Miss DeMint and I kind of tag team the whole student council show. Well, everybody loves to get dressed up and go to the dance, so it's a long-standing Farmington tradition, um, and we are very excited that we get to be part of it every year. Um, the talent show, I feel like, is always a good opportunity for any junior or senior girl that wants to, um, you know, show the world their awesome talent. From there, we have meetings with the girls, um, and I add them to a remind text thread, and then I bug them all the time about reminders or practice dates, times, um, newspaper articles. Um, they actually had to meet during seminar last week to get their picture taken for the newspaper. Um, and so then we start practices, which are from five to eight on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and so then we have the show. Uh, we do the judging. Um, Ms. Demon and I, and I are not a part of the judging. We just go through all of the scoring guides to make sure totals are calculated correctly. Um, and then we announce it at coronation right before the end on Saturday. So the whole process is pretty time consuming, um, but it's super duper fun. Um, the theme is actually chosen by student council. They voted on it um, a couple months ago, really. So we've had plenty of time to get decorations going. Um, we're going to come in Saturday morning um, from 8 to 12 and decorate for the dance. Hopefully that's enough time to get it all done. Uh, we'll see. So um, yeah, it's it's lengthy process, but it's worth it. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, Austin and Blake. Now, Alex Abishan and Logan Tabor are bringing us part two of their three-part series on weightlifting. Real quick before uh, lift review part two, uh, we will be working out the upper and lower abs and the lower back. Hi, my name is Alex Abishan. And I'm Logan Tabor. And this is Literature Review Part 2. Yes. Our next exercise is knees to 90. Be sure to get your knees to 90 and try to swing as minimum as possible. Our second lift is sit-ups. This will work your upper abdominals and be sure to get your back to touch the ground and your shoulders over your hips and make sure that your feet stay on the ground at all times. This third exercise is gonna be back extensions. Uh, as the name implies, it's gonna target your lower back when you're coming down, you want to make sure you're perpendicular with the floor and all the way back up, you want to be level. And that's all for Lift Review Part 2. We will see you next week. See, see ya! The What's Cooking segment last month received a lot of positive feedback, so back by popular demand is Ray Morrow, Cage Dobbs, and Alec Burke this time showing us how to cook a teen favorite, hamburgers. Good morning, FHS. I'm Chef Cage. And I'm Chef Ray. And today, on episode two of What's Cooking, we're gonna be making a homemade Happy Meal. But first, we're gonna get some input from the students and staff. All right, so if you're eating a hamburger, what is the food you have right next to it? What's the best? Like, I don't know, fries? There we go! If you're eating a hamburger, what are you eating right next to it? Um, like your burger on your plate, what else? Some tear tots. Ooh, quick question. So, if you have a burger, what do you eat next to it? What's the best thing with it? Fries. There we go. My name is Raymar, I'm here with What's Cook, and Anna, what do you like to have on your burgers? I don't eat burgers. You don't eat burgers, wow, okay, that's unfortunate. 
Hello, my name is Ray Mar. I'm here with What's Cooking. This is Bryce. What do you like to have on your hamburgers? Uh, chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken. On a ham. Okay, thank you. For hamburgers, you will need beef, buns, seasoning, and your desired condiments. So Chef Cage kind of knows what he's doing making burgers. I do sure. not. So we'll have me making one likely shabby burger, and Cage will be making several decent burgers. So before, I mean, before you start cooking, but you know, and before you start rolling meat, you're gonna want to wash your hands uh, with soap, of course. All right. So uh, you actually won't want to dry your hands after you wash your hands because uh, the meat will stick really bad to your hands. So to get, you, you just want a couple balls going, which they're about. Uh, probably about the size of like the palm of your hand. Not too big. You're also gonna wanna pack them really tightly so they don't fall apart as you're cooking them because that's bad. And the only way to really fix that is with cheese. But if you're lame and don't like cheese, well, it sucks. Need a little bit more on that one. I'm not joking when you say you got to pack them tight. You can smack them a little bit, but that don't really do much. Now we're going to let the right take a go at it. Okay, so I've got my hands wet. Now I'm going to give it a go. I'm not exactly sure how much meat I need. I'll say, I'll say about that. So let's see. But no, you really got to pack it down, like Cage said. I'm going to kind of try and roll it like he did. I don't exactly know what I'm doing here. I'm sure you can tell. Uh, let's see. Said, give it a firm slap. I think at one point. All right, and I'd say that's good. So now we're gonna start working on like actually, you know, cooking the burger. So I'm just gonna grab one of my meat or some of my meat over here. Uh, I like to put a little bit of salt down. I'm like, oh man, this is a little bit different. It's kind of just more of a flatten, flip, flatten, flip. So just gonna want to flatten it so it's a little. This is a little easier to flip. And it cooks, it'll cook a little bit faster like that too. And here I'm starting to see it's you know, getting darker on the bottom. So I'm gonna try to get it. Well, first, I'm gonna put some salt on this side just so it, you know, doesn't stick as bad when I flip it to the other side. So there you go. I go just want to flatten it out, not in half like that. So I can even put like this a little bit even, just to kind of stick it back together. It's been sitting for a bit, you can even kind of pick it up and look. It's starting to like crisp. Flip it again, press it down just a little bit more for all the paint still on the other side. But after this, you don't really want to press it down too much because you want those juices that are in there to stay in there. I mean, you, know, you don't want to bite into Sahara every time you eat a burger because you're bad at it. So, you don't really want like a super cold bun on a super warm burger. So, you're gonna wanna heat it up. I'm just gonna use a microwave, it's easy that way. But you can use like a steamer or basically anything that makes things hot. So, we'll just pull it on the microwave, it's super hot, so I'm gonna not touch it anymore. So, the cheese is most, for the most part melted and, or, and it, will, it should finish. So, I'm just gonna throw it on the bun. And we can put, you know, ketchup, mustard, onion, pickle, anything we want on there. After this, it's up to you. I'm not in charge of your burgers. Okay, so I'm up. I'm gonna start by just putting a bit of salt in here so it doesn't stick as bad like Cage said. I'm gonna take it and just set it down there. And we'll press it down a bit. Kind of get it nice and flat, I think. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip the burger. That nice bam on the other side. Ooh. All right, so now we're just gonna flip it back to the other side. Press it down some more. Make sure we get those last few pink spots nice and cooked. Okay, 
so now I'm just gonna take it and set it on the bun. And there you go. So our head chef Alec Burke is gonna come in and try our burgers out. Let me get in. Not being a fan of burgers, it's pretty juicy and good. That's all the time we have for this episode. And well, next week, we're gonna have you vote on what we're making, uh, which will be an ethnic food, which is either Chinese, Italian, or Mexican. It'll be in a Google form down in the comment section. Okay, thanks for tuning in to What's, What's Cooking. Nice job, guys. Maria, have you seen the Captain Marvel yet? Do I live under a rock? Of course I've seen Captain Marvel. Here to share the latest BKTV movie review on Captain Marvel is Austin Talley and Garrett Sheets. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Movie Review. I'm your host, Garrett Sheets. And I'm Austin Talley. So let's get right into this. Spoiler alert, if you do not want to know details and or the synopsis of this movie, then do not uh, watch this segment. Captain Marvel was made with $200 million and has already grossed $450 million so far, That's double what they had. And speaking of Captain Marvel and everything, since we are talking about that movie, it is released on Women's History Month. It was also released on uh, International Women's Day, which was March 8th. And it is the first solo female lead Marvel movie. So, as you all know, the director of most comics and movies, Stan Lee, has passed away. We will now have a moment of silence for him. Okay, our opinions on the movie. It was definitely new, considering the solo, uh, the Bill Larson did do a good job on act for Captain Marvel. And the whole story plotted out was definitely not a terrible one. We've seen worse, but it wasn't the best that we've seen. And I guess you could say it was a great movie overall. What well, do you think? I really liked the movie. I thought it was very entertaining. It was good for the time. Brie Larson did a great job with Captain Marvel. I think the story really rolled out as the movie came along. But it definitely had points where I was confused. It could have yeah. it could have done better with explaining it, but you know, all movies could. Yeah, and like, I like how they kind of adopted the process of her like regaining more memories as the movie went on, and then by the end of the movie, she remembered and saw all of the people that she remembered, and she knew who the person that she was to and human intelligence, and it was overall a great rolled out story. It was yeah. very. She did figure out who she actually was yeah. before the Kree took her. Yeah. She found out that she was more than what she thought. Exactly. So, the critics had a little bit of mixed reviews, different than ours. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 80%, Metacritic gave it a 64%, and IMDB gave it a 5.9 out of 10. So, you can see it's pretty mixed, but I mean, <clears throat> I guess it's okay, even though, I mean, we all have our opinion. Yeah, that's very true. Me and Garrett both thought it was a great movie. So, pretty much uh, a whole synopsis of the movie is Captain Marvel and Carl, Carol Danvers is born on Earth, but it basically becomes an extraterrestrial alien. She becomes a Kree warrior. She trains up there with him, and she ends up finding herself caught in between this battle between people of Kree and the Skrulls. Living on Earth in 1995, she keeps having recurring memories of another life as a U.S. Airport, Air Force pilot named Carol Danvers. With help from Nick Fury, Captain Marvel tries to uncover the secrets of her past while also trying to keep her special superpowers to end the war with the evil Skrulls. Yeah, because, yeah, like, what more could you say, even though she does find out in the end the Skrulls aren't? Her people we'll leave, are. Yeah, her, but we'll leave that to the movie with you. Thank you for tuning, on, tuning in with us for this episode of Movie Review. I'm Austin. And I'm Garrett. Thank and we're you. signing out. 
Before we have spring break, Max McKinney and Ethan Miller will bring us the latest segment of the Coach's Corner. The guys had the opportunity to sit down and chat with the new head coach of our track teams, Coach Jordan Stone. Yep, absolutely. Good to be here. Um, so tell us, how long have you been at Farmington? Um, I first started working at Farmington in 2003 and uh, started coaching in um, fall of 2004 is when I started coaching here. Okay, and you also were a student at Farmington? I was, yeah, graduated in 1991. Um, so what has your role been so far as a coach? Sure. I, uh, in fall of 2004, um, uh, Coach Krause, John Krause, had, uh, had just taken over uh, the, the head coach duties uh, for the cross-country team. And he, uh, he gave me a call. He knew I was in the area. And he gave me a call and, and said, uh, would you like to be my assistant coach? And uh, I said, absolutely, be happy to do it. So uh, for that first year in the fall of 04, uh, I was his assistant coach in cross country. I had no involvement with track at that point in time, that first year. Uh, and then the next year, uh, he stepped down from being uh, the cross country coach and I took over. Uh, so I, I started uh, as the cross country head coach in 2005. And then uh, in the spring of 2006, I first started as a volunteer track coach and then the next year I, I got a paid assistant position um, and then uh, this is my first year as the head coach so I've I've been with the cross country program for 15 seasons and this is my 14th season with the track program. Okay. Um, so like you said this is your first season as a head coach of the track team. Right. Uh, how is that, how is it different being a head coach than it is as being an assistant coach? Oh man that is, that's a really good question and I, it's uh, it's been a real learning process, uh, you know, in, uh, in track, you know, there are 19 different events and there are a lot of very uh, specific areas of, uh, to coach. And so for the last 13 seasons, I have uh, been entirely focused on the four distance races and working with those kids and uh, a lot of the legwork uh, that the head coaches are responsible for. Uh, historically, I haven't paid a lot of attention to it because Coach Eves uh, was, was such a great head coach in track, and he took care of all of that. And uh, so it has been a huge change for me, not only to begin the process of learning a lot more about the other areas of track that I haven't spent a lot of time on in the past, um, but, but also you know just all of the normal head coach stuff in terms of the paperwork and um, all, all of that stuff. And it's, uh, it's also... A, a little bit challenging in track because it's uh, track is the is the biggest program in the high school in terms of number of athletes. We've got 115, 116 kids on the track team, uh, so it's it's quite a few people uh, to to sort of have to get everything together for. So it's it's been a big transition for sure. Um, so, what kind of impact do you think that being a teacher uh, has on all of your athletes that are also your students? Oh, I I think it has a big impact. Uh, as a coach, you really you you really lead sort of two parallel lives because you have all of these kids that are in your life as students, and if they're not athletes, they they only know you from that from that teacher student relationship. Um, if and the same thing for the kids who you only coach, uh, but when you have a kid who is in your classes as a student and is also one of the athletes, it's, it's a, a good opportunity to, to get to know each other even better and to, to form stronger relationships. Um, so I, I think it has a huge impact and I, I like having sort of both, both things going on uh, for sure. I enjoy both. Okay, and final question, uh, what are you looking forward to most this track season? Oh, I'm just looking forward to getting into the competition phase. You know, these first three weeks, uh, you're, you're a baseball guy, you know how it is. You, the first three weeks, the, 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 it's cold, the weather's bad, uh, you've, you've got a lot of practice and no play, and uh, you, you know, all, all, anyone involved in spring sports, we're, we're waiting for the weather to warm and the sun to come out and the competitions to start. So I'm looking forward to that uh, for sure. We, I've, I've got a, a really, really great uh, coaching staff that, that I work with, and uh, a lot of really tremendous kids that are on the team, so I'm just anxious to get out and, and get started with the competition. Okay. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you.
That wraps up this episode of BKTV News. As always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for the notifications to keep up with the latest videos from BKTV Studios. We hope everyone has a safe and relaxing spring break. We will see you all back on April 1st.